So some of you may have actually seen that I switched over from my iPhone 13 Pro to my iPhone SE 3, the 2022 model, just about like a week ago, I think. I used it for about two and a half days, almost three days, and it's been about, I think, three or four days since I stopped using that phone. And what I will definitely tell you is, is that this transition period really wasn't anything super crazy. It was more, it was a little annoying for certain things, but a lot of the big ticket items that I would normally look at a device like battery and different things like like that. To be honest, I'm not really utilizing my phone as much nowadays than I did before. And so when I switched over to my iPhone SE 3, it was almost like when I switched over to my Galaxy S22. I mean, like I pretty much use my MacBook for everything. Now, if I didn't have a MacBook and I was doing everything on this device, that'd be a completely different story. But one of the biggest annoyances with something like an iPhone SE 3 is that, to be honest, the gesture-based design is a little bit of a bigger, you know, moving period than really anything else and even small things that I never really noticed before like if I had my iPhone on the you know counter or something like that I could tap the display and I can turn that iPhone on but with an iPhone SE 3 I can't tap the display to turn it on I can either raise to wake or I can click on the home button to turn it on which is kind of like an extra step but it's like those little types of things like those little annoyances is what kind of adds up to a strange experience I think that gesture based designed iPhone like the 13 Pro like the 10 even is a really really nice thing to have every once in a while now luckily for you if you love an iphone se3 or if you don't want to spend too much money i definitely do think that the speeds and you know the performance that i was getting from something like an iphone se3 was pretty much the same thing i would normally get on a 13 pro i didn't really notice you know i'll be honest the big things that i thought i would notice like the size and stuff like that i am already accustomed to those types of sizes i'm already kind of used to that type of design anyway so that didn't really change me either not really much changed i wasn't thinking to myself oh this is way worse even the camera setup to be honest was still pretty decent as well i didn't really have too much to complain about and the biggest thing i thought i would complain about which would be the battery life i was still ending the day with more than enough battery i think most of the time i was ending the day with like 70 80 percent most of the time and you know like i said i don't really use my phone a crazy amount i'm usually using it to edit a few of my thumbnails add those thumbnails through youtube studio for those videos and then that's really pretty much it answering phone calls texting you know messaging people snapchat instagram that kind of stuff and a tiktok especially but even that you know it didn't really seem like that big of a difference to be honest it's a smaller display it's a smaller screen but the big things that come with smaller bodies like those smaller battery sizes there's less performance the you know more screen typically those types of things i didn't really think those things didn't really stand out to me the thing that stood out to me the most was the gesture based design or lack thereof having to click that whole button every single time is kind of annoying i didn't even set up touch id i didn't even set up a passcode on this phone because i knew it wasn't going to be that big of an issue but just thinking to myself you know having touch id there was actually really cool and we need to separate the touch id and home button because touch id is really cool having a fingerprint sensor is awesome but clicking that home button is probably one of the biggest takeaways that i've seen from a device like this to be honest so what i will definitely tell you is you know this small little transition period if if I had to use this phone for a month or a year, completely different. If I was, you know, replacing my MacBook with only an iPhone SE 3, then that would be completely different. But since I'm not really using my phone a crazy amount, like I mentioned with my S22 video, it's not really that crazy big of a difference, you know? I think the biggest thing that I thought was going to be the biggest difference, which would be the battery life, didn't really seem, I mean, I'm ending my days with my 13 Pro with like 90%. I'm ending the day with my iPhone SE 3 at like 80 something percent. So not really that big of a difference there either. I don't really think though the iPhone SE 3 is worth the money still. I don't think, you know, much really changed. I think the biggest takeaway, probably the biggest thing that I would say is like, you know, I would tr probably try to avoid on something like an iPhone SE 3 is to see if you're willing to go in the used market. If you're willing to go and buy something like an iPhone, you know, 10R, that may give you a better experience than the iPhone SE 3. But, you know, it kind of surprised me a little bit, but my opinion is still about the same on the iPhone SE 3. So that kind of covers it. If you have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.